I pray to Jesus Christ, she said, who's the son of God. And you say Krishna is also the son of God. So I'm confused. Okay. This is more than a three or four minute question. But this is, this is the stuff that entire university courses are taught about. But in a, in a short nutshell, we actually don't say, I mean, we say figuratively we're the children of God because we've been created by and out of the divine. But we don't talk about it so much as actually a, a family lineage because what that would mean is that there are people who are not in that family. And what, what we believe is that everything Everyone, every being in the universe is divine. Let me give you a way to think about it. When you have infinity, think about it from a mathematical perspective, just basic math. If I have infinity and I subtract 100 from infinity, so we say infinity minus 100, what, what is the answer to that? Hmm, right? Infinity. Infinity minus 100 is infinity. What is infinity divided by 10? Infinity. What that means is that anything that comes from infinity is infinite. And, of course, infinity remains. So it's not that God has incarnated over here in the form of Krishna and is no longer over there, or that there's only enough God that it can incarnate in one being because now there's no more God left. I've pulled all of that and put it into Krishna. What we believe is God is infinite. And since God is infinite, there are an infinite number of manifestations of that divine. And we are taught that God comes on earth in, the, in form, in a specific form, when it is needed to bring back light to the darkness. When there's too much darkness, too much adharma, too much unrighteousness, and we need to restore light, restore dharma, restore righteousness, God comes in a specific form. But God is here all the time, in all forms. Every, every being on earth is the divine because we've been created out of that. There's a beautiful line in the Upanishads that tells us everything in the universe is pervaded by the divine. There is nothing that is not pervaded by the divine. What that means is that not only are we the children of God, because in our minds, if I've been created by something, I must be that the child. So that's why we use those terms. But really, what I am at my core is divine. And going back to your specific question about Jesus Christ, yes, Jesus Christ also is divine has come on earth, as the scriptures say, there was ignorance, there was darkness. God came on earth in this form to teach, to bring back light, to bring back the message. And that light is now what is bringing light to so many people. Does that make sense? So yes, Jesus, yes, Krishna, and yes, every being, every river, 
every mountain, every tree. Because Krishna also said, and we'll conclude here, Krishna also said, in whatever form the devotee worships me, in whatever form, whatever way the devotee worships me, I appear to the devotee in that form. So if you worship me in the form of Jesus Christ, I will come to you in the form of Jesus Christ. If you worship me in the form of Krishna, you'll see me in the form of Krishna. You worship me in the form of the tree in your backyard, in the form of your grandmother, in the form of the river. I will come to you in that form because I'm infinite. And I'm omnipotent. I'm all-powerful. I can, I can be any form. I'm not limited. So yes, Jesus, yes, Krishna, and yes, all of the divine creation.